Low Sea Trail Tracker, Enduro 24, SCX 24. One of these things is not like the other. Can you guess which one? Today we're looking at the Enduro 24 from Element RC. And I said one of these three is not like the other. This is from 2012, 2011. It's from Lossy, it's the Trail Tracker, which followed their very successful Lossy Micro Crawler, the little, little brother to the MRC, the, the mini rock crawler. The SCX24 has been around for a little while and the Enduro 24 as well. Now, two of these are the same and one is different. If you guessed the Trail Tracker because it's older, that's fair, but no. If you guessed the SCX24, that's fair in that it's got bigger wheels than these two, but also no. What's different is the Enduro 24, and I'm going to tell you why. The answer is to do with what's underneath. Both the uh, Trail Trekker and the SCX24 have a center mounted motor, and they've got worm gears in their diffs. They actually look pretty similar. And if I hold the diffs up, you will be able to see how they're both kind of long. They're, they've got the input shaft at the top, these are upside down, and then the, the uh, bigger gear at the bottom. So the worm gear at the top spins the gear at the bottom. So worm gears. This has a more traditional diff, just the little pumpkins. And that also means that it, it moves like a regular car. The problem with both the uh, SCX24 and the Trail Tracker is that being worm geared machines, you need to have throttle on for the wheels to move. So although you get rock solid hold for um, drag brake with both of these worm geared machines, the Enduro 24 actually has to work harder. But if you're anything like me, that's a plus. Um, one thing that's also nice about this is that it's uh, water resistant out of the box. I have no such warning for either of these. You can make both of these guys water resistant, but to have it out of the box is a nice touch. But the, the star of the show for me, and this isn't the only one on the market, and I've got a few others coming just out of interest, but you've got the motor next to the servo, which is the same as the bigger crawlers. Uh, and then you've got the transfer case down here. So the out drive from the, from the gearbox goes down. They're both metal cups, by the way, which is good because the dog bone would wear out plastic. And then you have plastic shafts that go out to each of the diffs. The gearing is consistent front and rear, um, and there's gonna be a little torque twist, but it's a lightweight rig, so that's not really a problem. What really attracted me to this in the first place was that it's uh, got the traditional layout. That's such a good thing to see. When this first came out in 2012, I've actually got a couple of these, and I've, I've got one dressed up like a Land Cruiser. You might've seen that on other videos, but it's never been quite satisfying with the worm gear setup. The SCX24 being newer, and having slightly better geometry, even though it still has the three, the three link upper suspension, it does crawl a bit better, I think. But this, oh, I haven't crawled with it yet. I've charged the battery for it, but I haven't driven it at all. I really can't wait to try it because I want to see, I want to see it work a little to hold itself. It, because it weighs so little, even off, you couldn't do this with a full size crawler because it would roll uh, in many cases. It holds itself so. Drag brake electrically isn't really going to be a problem on this thing. Smaller electrical systems can have troubles with um, features like drag brake or servo strength, but having such a lightweight rig means that's not going to be so much of a problem. The other thing that's nice, which you might think is a, a con, but I see it as a pro, is that it runs on a 1S, which means single cell lithium battery. The SCX24 runs on a 2S battery. It's an 8 volt system, whereas this is just a 4 volt system. That's a good thing because your battery life is gonna be effectively doubled. This says 520 milliamp hour on the battery. I'm skeptical of that figure, but even if it's 400 or more, that's still the equivalent of an 800 on this size. Now the 2S that comes with this is a 350 milliamp hour. The motor will be a lower turn motor I haven't backed this up, I'm just guessing, but it's an educated guess. It'll be a lower turn motor because you need more torque because it's a traditional system uh, and you want lower speed. Whereas these guys both need to have a fairly high speed motor where torque doesn't matter so much because all you've got torque for days coming out of the, uh, the gearbox. You'd need to be working it pretty hard, I think, to burn the motor out. So that's, they work for what they are, but oh man, 
I'm still enjoying the fact that this has the chassis rails with the transfer case in the middle. Now it says water resistant on the um, combination ESC and uh, receiver. There are no markings on the server that I can see at all. One would expect that it has some water resistance to it. I wouldn't go driving this through a puddle. I mean, if you can keep the water below the server, that'd be good. I reckon you could drive this through pretty torrential rain. As long as you stayed out of puddles that were deeper than the height of the wheels, you'd probably be fine. But let's just say you did want to go deeper. You might just replace it with a waterproof servo. It's a micro size. I think the TR4 looking at it would fit, which is a good choice. It's about 20 bucks. Drive it in the dry if you can, but if you're in the wet, have some fun. Water is unfortunately much more fun than uh, dry. Obviously it's simple suspension here. It's going to be quite bouncy. You could slow that down a little bit with um, maybe some kind of silicon tube in the top of the springs there, but that's, uh, I think it'll be fun to have body roll as it is. If you have seen this, you'll be familiar that there's a removal and now it feels like I'm holding some kind of uh, magazine uh, and you can even pop it out. There's no clip, so I don't feel completely cool, but you do have the bullets. It only takes, um, it takes four AAAs. Anyway, that's done. And now I'm gonna load it. Uh, I had a little feel of this before I started this video. And one thing I don't like about this radio is when you, when you go to reverse, my knuckle presses up against the bottom of the body. It's, it makes, it makes reversing kind of uncomfortable. That's, that's a downside, but forward is fine. Steering's got a nice, nice little bounce to it as well. You've got some basic adjustability in the top. It's basically just your um, dual rate for, uh, which on something like this, it means how far the wheels will go at maximum throw. You do have a third channel. There's a button for channel three, uh, but I see no output for it here. And you've got uh, steering and throttle trim as well as dual rate. So that's, it's a basic radio. It uses smaller batteries, but you know, it's for small hands. And if you move your hand further down the shaft, it'll, um, it makes reversing easier. I'm not that guy, so I can't say that's what she said. Uh, one other thing I noticed was there are lights, little LEDs in the uh, in the front bumper there. They light up when you're going forward, which means we should be able to make them light up by doing this. There we go. You're not going to harm your electronics doing what I'm doing here, if you're wondering and wincing. There'll be a diode across the uh, motor outlet, which will be taking this current. It's not going through the electronics, most likely. Don't do it yourself, let me break my stuff and you can enjoy yours working for a long time. Comes in a bag, now I've sealed this with the magic of uh, my scaled time machine. This is in the bag and sealed, but it has been charged already. Uh, little USB charger and a manual of some kind with some uh, spare part numbers and whatnot. It's a very smooth undercarriage, comparing it to the uh, 24 again. Try to get the light point, there you go. So there's a little protruding bump down there and some little things to get hung up on. This is uh, beautifully smooth underneath. There's no special attachment mechanism for this body. It's just a traditional body post and body pin affair. Not like the SCX24, which has one simple clip with a pull tab on it and the whole thing lifts up. That's pretty nice, but that's okay because we're here to play.
I just got this thing out on the rocks and the very first thing I did was to put it on a 110 scale course and ask it to do stuff it just really wasn't designed to do. Looking at, uh, at it from a damage perspective, there's a little bit of scratching underneath. Uh, the tires really could have done with um, more traction. Now, if you look closely, you can see they're, um, they're glued together. So they're stuck on these rims, but that's okay because I have those cheap Enduro wheels that are heavier. And I think uh, being able to hold their shape a bit better will help because these were squishing flat and kind of pulling against the rock. And I think there's, uh, there's some lost opportunity for traction there, especially when it deforms and starts to stretch like that. Not ideal. That's, that's my nitpicking. Um, and that's all the nitpicking I have. Let me tell you some cool stuff I've noticed. I'll get the top off. Okay, so the radio for a start wasn't so bad. The reverse you get used to pretty quick and that's fine. Um, the machine itself, let's see here. I've just asked quite a lot of that mach of, the, of the motor for a, a while. It's warm but not hot. Servo's cool to the touch. Now the servo didn't fade. That's, oh, hang on, that's not a steering crate. I'm holding it just by one wheel here, right? Look at that. This is a strong servo. What an amazing plus for a little rig like this. They're not usually that strong. Drag brake is evident. I'm gonna turn it off and see the difference. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's real drag brake there. It's about a 50% rate, but that's all it needs to be um, to hold it completely. Like on a bigger truck, that'd feel like 100%. When I was going down descents, I found putting it on a, on a hill like this and just holding the throttle gently, it would just kind of glide down the way I would like it to go. It was very controlled. So that's that's quite a big plus. So I like the steering. I like the motor. I like the the feel of it for driving. Um, the little radio, I don't know how long that battery is going to last, but I think it'll be sufficient. This kind of, uh, this kind of scale is really more of a in between other things kind of toy. It's not the same as when you take one of the bigger rigs out onto the trail for three or four hours and you take a big pack, big battery pack, and you've got your water on your back and you're out for hours and hours. You don't do that with these. If I test the volts on this, I'll tell you right now, just straight away, it's still gonna be above four volts. Fully charged is 4.2. Nominal, which means storage, it's uh, 3.7 and flat for this kind of thing. Being smaller is slightly higher than big cells. It'll be like three to 3.2 volts flat. This is still gonna be above four. And I've just been driving for 15 minutes. Uh, it's gonna be ample battery, this little tiny battery. And it weighs so little. I don't think you ever really need to worry about upgrading. Weight bias is pretty nice. It's um, it's near the front of the skid, which is just right. And that's with the battery way at the back. Entry and departure points are quite good, the angles. Um, we'll stick the body on so we can see that more realistically. In fact, this is a good measure of, uh, of the entry and departure. There's very little scratching on the back and on the front. And I was looking at the Lexan underneath. It's lovely thick Lexan too, it's well finished. Um, it's not all scratched up, so that, that's a good thing. That tells you that they've got the body fitted nicely to the, to the rig. Um, there is quite a bit of overhang here, but your entry and departure angles are pretty good. Um, I don't know what the precise degree is, but I mean, that's, there we are. That's entry and there's your departure completely ample for this. So the electronics get a pass. The uh, the rig itself is quite fun and I don't know how much is placebo and how much is legitimate here but I gotta tell you this was more fun to drive than the SCX24 and the uh, little Losis. It felt different. Being able to drive and have the have it rolling forward a little faster there's, there's something of uh, visual feedback to what you're feeling through the trigger. On the worm gear models, you don't have that. You can be going down a hill and as soon as you're off the trigger, whoop, it stops by that. I think my least favorite part of these is that resolution's pretty good. Like you put some, you put some resistance on it and you've got to add throttle and add throttle and add throttle before it starts to go. But then when it goes, it's wow. Um, that's down to the turns in the motor and in the resolution in the radio. Uh, a lower turn, sorry, a higher turn motor, which means lower top speed, but more torque would be advantageous here. But overall, it's not bad. 
certainly the sound from the motor um, with the pulse width modulation that is that we I've got the microphone right here you can hear it it's not that loud but when you put the body on it it's not even attached yet and it really amplifies it you might be able to prevent that by putting just one line of fabric tape along um, that adds weight so maybe just do it on the on the hood and the uh, the tray there just literally an inch or two uh, just straight and straight that will help dampen the the sound because otherwise that thing ad acts as a speaker for this thing uh, but there's not much else you can do about that there was a strange pulsing noise like a do 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 when I was when I was adding power when I was first coming up this ramp here I noticed it yeah listen to this There's like a dong 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 to it. That's just an artifact of the um, electrical system. Again, nitpicking. This is a brilliant little truck. If you could only have one tiny truck from the three I've presented here, one's a decade old, so obviously not the trail tracker. If it's down to SCX24 versus Enduro24, it's an easy choice for me. I actually like the SCX24 better in its body mounting. I like it better in its uh, radio system is definitely better. Um, and you get more flexibility with the uh, ESC receiver unit, but that's where it ends. To have a separate transfer case to the gearbox. Oh man, and it's a nicer servo too. This is such a nice little rig and it runs on one cell battery, which means that's so much power in one little battery. I've got a few more tiny trucks in this scale coming and we're gonna compare. I found another brand that, that does this, that's on its way. Um, so stay tuned for that and I'll show you there. So thanks for watching. If you found this entertaining or interesting or useful or all of the above, throw me a like and I'll catch you next time on RCTNT. Now let's use the rest of this battery. Might have to clear my afternoon schedule. All right, little truck and hit the trails. There was a strange pulsing noise like a dong 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 pulsing noise like a dong 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 like a dong 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 to it. That 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 Wow!